2,000 years of history in this beautiful city of York. But we can only see in our lifetime a few decades at a time. But there's one place, just the one in this city, where you can stand and see all 2,000 years at once. And that's what I want to talk about today. So we're heading somewhere really tucked away between the library and the museum gardens. Archaeology is amazing and what never ceases to amaze me is just how much the ground level rises. Here it's about a foot a century in York. It's incredible when you think about it that the ground level today 10 to 15 feet above where it would have been in Roman times. So what they've done here is they've deliberately excavated in such a way that it shows where all the different ground levels, all the different layers were across all the different periods of time. So here, the lowest level, this is the Roman bank from the 1st to the 4th century. The next ground level up, the Dark Ages Bank, 5th century to the 10th century. Beyond that, where the ground level was in Norman times, 11th to the 12th. And then if we go up to the top there, the Medieval Bank, where it would have been in the 13th century. And just coming along here, go up to where that door is with a slightly rude slogan on it <laughs> at the bottom, that's where the ground level is today. All this material here under the ground and under all of the city of York today. Someone told me that only about 10 to 20% of the city has actually been excavated. This is because they can only dig somewhere when they need to build something new, so usually meaning knocking something existing down. This means, for instance, that huge swathes of the Roman city lies undiscovered, buried beneath us. For instance, we know the Roman city of York would have had a huge amphitheatre for entertainment. But where was it under the city? We don't know because we haven't found it yet. We're so lucky though, here in York, because of all the brilliant layers of history that we do have. Roman, Viking, Norman, medieval. And so when we do get the chance to dig somewhere new, it's very exciting. The city is an archaeologist's paradise. Here we are in Chapter House Street. This was the old Roman road, the Via Decumana, to the back gate of the fort. I say this was the old Roman road, but actually the Roman road was 15 feet below here. Like I mentioned before, the ground level just keeps rising. There's a story here. The year was 1953. Harry Martindale was working in this building here, the Treasurer's House. There were a lot of people working in the building at the time. He was an 18-year-old apprentice and he was sent down to the basement. He was a plumber, started working, propped up his ladder and got on with the job. He's working away, several hours go by and then suddenly he starts to hear a noise, kind of like a musical noise coming through the wall, like a kind of radio sound he thinks. Ignores it at first, but it gets louder and louder until, in front of him, he sees before him Roman ghost soldier coming through the wall. So with the helmet and the feathers. Behind that, suddenly a horse and mounted cavalry, a soldier on top. In a state of shock, 
He cowers into a corner, but there's more. Behind that, in two lines, Roman soldiers, he said there were about 18 of them, all marching in pairs, all cut off at the knees. The soldier he sees at the front is cut off at the knees. The marching horse is cut off at the knees. Behind that, the pairs of Roman marching soldiers are all cut off at the knees. One of them's carrying a wind instrument, which presumably he thinks must be the noise he heard, the musical noise, originally. What he says about them is that they were so close, like he could reach out and touch them, but also that they felt so real, rather than being ghostly figures, it was like they were really there and he was really right next to them. So Harry, of course, was in a complete state of shock, took himself some good time off work. Now, what's important is he gave a description at the time of these Roman soldiers. He said they had green tunics and he said that they carried their swords on the right hand side. Now this at the time was really unusual. For one thing, the um, dye at the time, they didn't really think that the Romans used green dye, it was always purple or red tunics. So it was a bit strange. But also the Roman soldiers would always carry their swords traditionally on the left hand side. So it's very strange. In fact, people thought Bye that this story was a complete load of rubbish because it just didn't add up with historians, with anyone. Harry was, well, he didn't make a penny from the story. In fact, at the start, he didn't really like telling it because people didn't believe him. As the years went by, this is what happened. More research was done into the Romans here in York. The uniforms and the insignia that Harry had described were spot on. There's no way he could have known. So for instance, green tunics is what we found the reserve troops here would have worn, rather than the purple or red. And not only that, we discovered that these troops here would have carried their swords by their right hand side. Harry was right. Not only that, we discovered underneath was where the Roman road went. So in other words, the reason they were cut off at the knees was because they were walking on the old Roman road which was below. Today, the treasurer's house is perhaps more famous for this story than anything else, even though the current queen has stayed there, for one thing. The story is recounted all over the world the story of Harry and the Roman ghosts. It's just staggering to see how much the ground level has risen. How can it be? It doesn't seem possible. How did all the material end up underground? If you imagine someone builds a house and then for whatever reason they leave it, over time it all collapses, the walls, the roof, and as time goes by it's covered in plants, little creatures, the weather gets to it, the plants decay so the soil builds up and slowly but surely comes upwards um, and with the remains of the house eventually being buried. It's not the only reason, uh, man's involved in the build up too. Uh, buildings are abandoned, materials are left lying around. Sometimes people build on top of the old stuff and so all the materials um, create the rising. And as if that isn't enough, there's all the rubbish. If you imagine today, um, if all the rubbish didn't go into bins and we just left it lying around, you can imagine that all the food will gradually decay and turn into soil. And sometimes you might even need to build an extra layer into your house to get above the rising rubbish. And that too adds material, of course. Add to that the possibility of flooding in some places needing resurfacing. And that ground level just keeps rising.